Baldy's breakdowns here. PHNX Cardinals, Johnny Venerable, Brian Baldinger here. NFL All-City Analyst and Baldy. Just when I'm ready to sell stock on this team, after the shellacking yep. against Washington and Cliff Kingsbury, this team goes out against San Francisco, specifically in the second half, totally redeems themselves. I mean, what was your initial takeaway? You're watching the film. A, a, a victory for Arizona Cardinal fans that w- was not expected, but certainly warranted. Well, they earned the victory. You know, I mean, maybe they brought the desert heat with them. You know, everybody's talking about the weather. Maybe it was desert heat. But, you know, like they hit them right in the mouth. First play of the game. They blew the coverage. Trey McBride. Next play, Kyler goes 50. 7 nothing. All right. So San Francisco gets control of the game. They're in control, and then the running game kicked in, and they physically, I mean, what Buda Baker did in that game to George Kittle, what what he did, Jalen Thompson, you know, Jake Laquetta, Jesse Laquetta, I mean, they they took that game from him. They took the game from him. They physically beat him. They physically, you know, pounded him in the run game. It's like the 49ers had never seen Kyler Murray or Reed Option before. They had no answer. Um, It was a a hard-earned victory, but, I mean, I thought Nick Rayless had a great game. He called some great uh, blitzes and pressures that San Francisco did not handle well, led to some turnovers. Um, it was a complete, complete win. And that's, I mean, if, you, if, you know, if you're on the way home, you're on that ride home and you're, you know, you're, you're Coach Gannon right there, you're saying like to everybody, this is what we're capable of doing. We, we're, we, can, we can play and we can be, you know, the bullies in this league and the teams that are expected to be playoff teams. We can do that. But it's – it could be it could be it's just one game, but it could be a game that can turn this thing around. I was thinking the same thing. We had you on in the preseason and we talked about what kind of steps this team needed to take beyond just, you know, playoffs and getting mm-hmm. to the right direction. And you you made a comment that's resonated with me, just like beating good teams. Yeah. Like San Francisco, despite their record, they're a good team. And I, good I looked team. at their roster specifically offensively. And yes, they don't have Christian McCaffrey. Jordan Mason's a good player. And then they had all their skill players, Debo and Kittle and Ayuk. Mm-hmm. How did the Cardinals pull that off? I know they they gave up 23 points, but at the same time, they gave up one offensive touchdown. The other touchdown was a blo- block kick. How, what, when you watch the tape, you mentioned Nick Rowles, Cardinal defensive coordinator. It's kind of like an island of misfit toys with this defense right now where there is such low expectations for them to come out and play that way. Like, What did that show you? Well, a couple of things. One, the coverage was outstanding. You know, outside of, honestly, um, Brandon Ayuk winning a couple routes, I mean, they were sticky in coverage. Like, there wasn't – that's why the quarterback was holding the ball. He was waiting for somebody to pop open, and they weren't getting open. And, you know, the longer he holds the ball, you know, you, you get a tip ball by Lopez and turns into an interception. I mean, all these things happen. And so people were asking me in San Francisco, why is, it, why is Brock Purdy holding the ball so long? I'm like, because guys aren't getting open. And that, that's on Shanahan. That's on the players they have. That's that's that. Um, you know, and so they made they made the big plays. I mean, the 50-yard touchdown run. I mean, those type of plays, they're hard to come by. That doesn't happen in the NFL. But I thought – I thought uh, – I've always thought the safety combination of Jalen and Buddha was elite. And I always thought it was amongst the best in the league. It never got talked about because they didn't win enough games. But they clearly outplayed the 49ers' safeties. I mean, it wasn't even close. They made one play after another. And so when Buddha plays like that, I don't know how he does it. I don't know where the power or just – <laughs> I don't know where it comes because there's, there's not a whole lot to Buddha. He reached out to me this this week and, you know, thanked me for some of the things I said. But, you know, like that guy plays the game the right way. So does Jalen. I mean, both of them play the game the right way. They set the tempo. And, you know, I think Zayvon Collins, I think people recognizing this guy is playing really good football right now. Kazir White makes the big play. I mean, they got enough – like, they don't have elite defensive linemen. They don't have Nick Bosa over there. But they they they, they maximize what they do have right now. And, you, you know, you mentioned 49ers elite team. I mean, look, when you have Trent Williams, the highest paid tackle, George Kittle amongst the highest paid tight ends, all right, you got Ayuk and Debo and Fred Warner. I mean, Nick Bosa. I mean, they're, they're the highest paid players their position in the league. Like, they're an elite roster. And you beat that team in their place. And that's like you can, you know, it's like going to Philly last year, but you know, Philly was sort of like tanking. They were kind of like on a downward spot. This was this was unexpected. And they took the fight to the 40. They earned that win. Wasn't a fluke by any chance. 
it feels like defensively the Cardinals are are maxing out their their skill set, and and I can't wait to see what Nick Rollis does with even more you know resources you mentioned up front on the defensive line. The opportunity to get Darius Robinson back as early as this weekend that will help. I want to turn your attention to the offensive side because it's it's been a little bit hit or miss. Like they have the resources, like they have multiple receivers. We're going to talk about Marv Trey McBride. Let's talk about K1, Kyler Murray, and the game he had. Because I think it, it, you could look at the numbers and say, oh, you know, two total touchdowns, and he, he had a bad interception. But the Cardinals seem to have figured out, at least for a week, that if you can minimize the amount of shots that he takes as a runner, th- being able to balance that, like a Lamar Jackson, for instance, that makes things incredibly difficult, even for a front seven like San Francisco. No, uh, there's no question. I mean, it shocked me, honestly that they didn't have a better answer to the read option because it wasn't just the first run for a touchdown. There was other plays just like that where, you know, he's scooting for 15 yards, 12 yards. He's picking up, you know, chunks, you know, uh, and, and look, James Conner, I think people in San Francisco have deep respect for how powerful he is, how well he ran and how the line blocked, you know, in that game. I mean, that was, that was impressive up front what they did, you know, they're without Hernandez, you know, the right tackle is, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I mean, look, he's he, he's a pro. He's, he's a pro. But we're not saying talking about an elite player at that position right now. But, you know, who cares? I mean, they, they got it done up front. And so uh, Elijah Higgins, you know, does a good job in his role. So I, I, I thought that they maximized what they did. I, I thought Nick called an incredible game. It's You match your wits with Kyle Shanahan, and I thought, you know, a couple of those pressures that he got, he got home, like they – that, th- those were good. Those were well done. Let's talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. Because I, I think there's temptation there every week for the Cardinals to go to him early and often. He makes a couple big plays, especially down the stretch on fourth and five. But, you know, it's been pointed out time and time again, like the the easy throws and the easy catches, they're just not there yet with Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. Do you think that's a byproduct of maybe the, the play calls? Is it a byproduct of the inexperience? Because – I think we look around the NFL and like Brian Thomas Jr. is having a fast start and Malik Neighbors, but also those those offenses, in my opinion, Baldy, they, they go through those receivers. Whereas the Cardinals' offense, they they want to be a run offense first. Like that's who they are. That's who Nick, Drew Petsing is. He's gonna. I mean, I've watched all those guys, and, and Brian Thomas might be the best of all of them right now. Uh, the way that he's playing, he's. But they, I I, I think this thing. I think people thought this thing was just going to be automatic just because there was such a need for Marvin that it was just going to be automatic. And what we saw in a couple games where they lost, like they're forcing balls to them where, okay, you know, maybe if it's, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams in their prime in Green Bay, you could do that. When you have such elite field timing, you've been in the system for a long, long time, you could take those kind of shots and get those kind of plays. Drew Brees and Michael Thomas where, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't cover. Like, it's just – that's just not there yet. There's one thing to go out and practice and go out there Wednesday and work on routes and combinations. Another thing to do it in a game. And, you know, we know that Kyler is, is always going to be a little challenged by what he sees and how he sees it. And so it's not going to be maybe as fast as what Trevor at six foot five is going to see Brian Thomas. It's just, it's just not going to happen that way. And so it's going to happen a little bit different. And so I, I think there's a little bit of adjustment between the size because I've heard this from other people and I haven't talked to Marvin or the receivers there, but I used to hear it from guys in Seattle with Russell Wilson. Like they didn't see the flight of the ball right away because of where he was being thrown or because of his size, it came late. And so um, you're not seeing the ball released out of the hand a lot of times. And it was always a problem for Doug Baldwin and some guys. They didn't talk about it because it was, you know, that was their quarterback. But there is something to that. I'd be interested, you know, if you got a Peyton Manning, Trevor Lawrence, six foot five, six six, uh, over the top release, versus you know a five foot nine or five foot ten Kyler. Do you see the Do you see the release? Like it, that interests me to see if it's as apparent as it is a guy that's you know has the stature in the pocket. Yeah, you're preaching the the timing piece that that hopefully will come in time yeah. um, for the Arizona Cardinals. The time is now for for John again, and it, it seems like because another thing we talked about again in the preseason, Baldy, this team went 0 for 6 in the NFC West last year. 
They are suddenly 2-0, and yeah. being their only two wins. Uh, they've had a tough schedule. They've had the second hardest schedule begin this year. They're two, a very respectable, I think, 2-3 and three with their two victories against Kyle Shanahan and, and Sean McVay. Like, how do you map out the landscape of the NFC West where the, where the Cardinals suddenly appear very viable? Well, look, I mean, there's a game tomorrow night, you know, in Seattle, San Francisco, Seattle. I mean, if San Francisco wins, they're all three and three, right? You, you know, you go to Green Bay and win, everybody's three and three. You know, I mean, the Rams are going to get better. They got better last year. They started slow last year. The running back is real. They're going to get some linemen back. They're going to get the receivers. They're going to, they're going to have a, a finish. They're going to finish strong. But, you know, they're all, they're all about the same right now. I mean, they're all losing games that they don't want to lose. The Giants went up there and just whipped Seattle. You know, they weren't expecting that, but they outplayed them. And so, really, the landscape of the NFC is the Giants didn't know that they could do that without Malik Neighbors, without Motor Singletary. They went up there with the rookie running back who's never played running back, you know, and he ran for 129 yards. Like, who's ready to play? Like, the Giants played great. I've watched that game. I do stuff for the Giants. They played great. Like, executed. They they protected the quarterback. They they opened up real holes up front. I mean, they they won the, the defense line just whipped Seattle at the line of scrimmage. They sacked him seven times. I mean, Gino never had a chance. So like this stuff can it's week to week. It's just a week to week business right now. I touched on it earlier. We'll get you out of here on this, Baldy. Darius Robinson was back on the practice field in a limited capacity this week. They haven't officially activated him the former first-round pick out of the SEC, off of injured reserve. But it's coming, whether it's this week or next week, they're ramping him up. I mean, I, I saw him. I thought he was the, the most impressive young front seven player the Cardinals have, have had in, in some time. With with your kind of exposure to him, both at the collegiate level and a little bit in camp, like what can he bring to a – what I think respectfully is probably a, a talent-starved Cardinal defensive line. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, first of all, he's going to bring a professional approach. All right. He's not like some, okay, well, I've had this, you know, I'm a gifted guy. I can just get away. No, I, I met that kid. Like I communicated with him during the draft process, but I met him at Von Miller's SAC summit this year. And look, that's, that was uh, at the end of June, right after mini camp. Uh, it was 112 degrees out there. He was there. Max Crosby. I mean, guys that are serious about, you know, Brian Burns. There was there was a good group of people there, and he was there, and it showed me a lot. Showed me a lot that this kid has a little. And then I met him, talked to him. You, you know, he's very mature, um, but you see tremendous size. All right, I think they're going to move him around. I think the way Jonathan Gannon will play him might be a little bit like he he used Fletcher Cox. Like I could see him in that kind of role. Now Fletcher's uh, he's thicker. And he's more powerful than, than Darius, but they have similar type size. And I can see him playing them on a variety of positions, depending on what front they're, they're in. Um, you know, if they're trying to stop the run, they're going to be in some kind of a, a bare front, and he's going to probably play one of the ends right there. Um, so I can see him moving around, nickel, getting after the quarterback, probably rushing from the inside first. But I can see him going into the outside and coming off the edge a little bit uh, because of his power. So, uh, look, it, it, you, you need – Talent. You, you need talent. All right. And that's going to be an upgrade. Um, personally, I, I feel like with the injury they had, you're better off waiting a week than to start too soon. Like, let's get this thing completely behind you and let's start. Let's start from square one right now. Yeah, I, they, they desperately need him among their defensive line. They're going to be smart about it. We're made smarter every time you join us, Baldy. Thank you so much. Check them out, Brian yeah. Baldinger. You're at Philly, your hometown here yeah. uh, this weekend as they take on the Browns. We'll be checking you out. Follow him on Twitter, NFL All City Analyst, Brian Baldinger. Thanks, Baldy. Thanks, John. You got it, man. Appreciate you. We all city like the mayor. 